This video is about one process that can be used to produce a three-dimensional wooden star like this. First, you need a little star 101, so go find out how to draw a pentagon and then come back. Most likely this project will really bend your brain, so the best advice that I can give you is first to go and make a mock-up like this on a paper. Just make folds in your star that connect this point here to the opposite inside corner. This is a really simple visual reference that you can use while we're making stars so that you don't become confused. First, let's consider this two-dimensional star. The star-making jig that I'm about to show you can be used to make two-dimensional stars like this as well. This star just came right off the jig. I didn't even sand the miters to make them fit better or anything, so it is possible to make cuts this accurate. I just used the chamfering device to put this nice decorative edge on it. Essentially we're just making one part. The other half of each petal is really just a mirror image. Simple geometry can be used to determine the angles of each part. But complications arise when we attempt to translate these geometric versions of these angles into usable carpentry angles. Here I've set the miter saw to 18 degrees. It is pretty obvious that this is nowhere near the type of cut that I need to make in order to do this. But the protractor clearly indicates that this is 18 degrees. Let me explain why. The angles that are marked on a miter or table saw are all relative to 90 degrees, not zero. So when you make an 18 degree cut on a miter saw, what you're actually doing is either adding or subtracting 18 degrees to or from 90 degrees depending on which side you have your stock on. Making a zero degree cut would actually be like not making a cut at all. It would be undefined, like in math terms, where slope is rise over run. A vertical line has an undefined slope because it's essentially the same as infinity over zero, and we know we can't divide by zero. So I guess for us carpenters, the rip cut is undefined. We really don't need to use the miter saw at all. This is the jig that I constructed. It's pretty much a modified table saw sled. This is the shape that we want to create. So these blocks are positioned in such a way that it makes this cut first and then you can flip it around to make that cut. The reason this seems unnecessarily complicated is because we have to make special considerations for this angled stock that we're going to be using. Positioning of these blocks is critical. It has to be perfect. The angle on it is 18 degrees. That's just the normal 18 degrees on your miter saw, not the fancy geometric 18 degrees. But positioning the blocks is the difficult part. These blocks have to be positioned at exactly 18 degrees, and the only way to get truly accurate positioning is to use mathematics. This is the triangle that we need to solve for. I'm going to solve a generic version of it right now, treating side A as 1 inch. That way you don't have to repeat the math, you can just multiply the results by whatever size you choose. The only thing we really know about this triangle is all of its angles. We don't know any of its side lengths, but for the purposes of solving it, we're going to let side A equal 1. This type of problem can be solved using the law of sines. This law states that the sine of angle A over length A is an equivalent ratio to the sine of angle B over length B. Since our formula doesn't even use C information, I'm just going to erase it because it's unnecessary for this problem. Now I've just filled in my given information to the formula so I can erase this. And we can continue solving this problem. Since these are equivalent ratios, we can just cross multiply. And that gives us B times sine 18 equals 1 times sine 72. Now we just want to isolate B, so we divide both sides by sine 18.
these cancel out and this is what B equals. The rest is just calculator math. So when we punch it in, we find out that B equals 3.078 when A equals 1 inch. Now because these two lengths of the triangle make a ratio, as long as I multiply both numbers by the same number, I'll preserve the ratio. So if I multiply them both by 3, 1 times 3 is 3, and this number here times 3 is 9.234 and those are the dimensions for my triangle and my jig. Now all that's left to do is to make stars. There are still a couple points I would like to make about the sled. This is sandpaper, and all it does is adds friction so that the stock doesn't slide around during the cutting. It's also worth mentioning that I tried to use these toggle clamps for the dangerous cut to hold the stock in place while it was being cut, but honestly it just became too much playing around. It still seems like a decent enough idea that if somebody invested the time they could perfect it. Well, I hope you found this video useful and helpful, so thanks a lot for watching.